Joining us right now, the great former New York Matt. He also played for the Yankees. Number 18, <laughs> Daryl Strawberry. Daryl, Tiki Barber, Evan Roberts, thank you very much for coming on. How you doing? Tiki, Evan, man, good to talk to you guys. How you guys doing? We are great. Before we talk about anything, how you feeling? We know about the health scare from a few months ago. How are things going right now? Well, thanks for asking. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm recovering well. Um, I'm a strong guy. I'm a fighter. I'm not a quitter. I don't give up. I don't surrender easy. Uh, I came very close. Mm. Almost lost my life. I could have lost my life, you know, at, you know, having my heart at 40% when I went into the hospital and having a massive heart attack and wow. had to have a procedure done immediately. And um, then I've been down for two months. So, I mean, last three months I had a defibrillator on and had to wear that and had to wear a bra. So I know what it's like for women now to have to wear a bra and sleep in it. You <laughs> yeah, know, so. yeah. I mean, with, yeah. The, with, a lot what, of work, you know. <laughs> right. What what kind of changes did you have to make to your lifestyle, Daryl? Like eating, I mean, you know, exercising, etc. I mean, I think I was in, um, in great shape. You know, it wasn't about not being in great shape or anything like that. I, I, think, I think it's just uh, time of life and, you know, getting older and things are going to happen. And um, if you're not in good shape, you know, the doctor said, well, you're in great shape and your body is responding so well and it, and it kept you here. So it's responding so well. Uh, that's a big plus. You know, I, I, I try to stay fit. Uh, I try not to eat late at night. I go to bed early at 830. So I try to do all the little things. So I think that really helped me. But I was in a five-day uh, situation of traveling and on the road, and I was having a massive heart attack, and I didn't even didn't wow. even know it. Wow, that's that's great. Did, did you have a history of like cholesterol, high blood pressure? Because I have that, and I I go to the doctor every year, Daryl, but I I kind of just have ignored these things because, like you, I'm in good shape. And my doctor finally said, I think you need to get on a a, a pill uh, to control your blood pressure yeah. for that exact reason. Yeah, I mean, I think that's important. You know, once we reach a certain age and stuff like that when we, we we look like we may be 25 but we're not 25 yeah and you know and i think it's important medication is important to take and um i'm on a lot of medication i'm diabetic too uh, so uh it's just about being able to stay on top of it and now i'm taking heart medicine i gotta take medicine every day yeah. you know twice a day you know pills so you got to stay on top of it and you just got to remember what's important and you know at, the, at this time for yourself yeah high blood pressure I'm there. You know, um, sugar high, yes, I've been there. Uh, but now, you know, I've, I've controlled that, and I kept it well for a very long time. But still, I ended up with a massive heart attack, guys. So right. that, mm. that, well, should, that should make a lot of guys aware of the fact that it doesn't matter how super strong you think you are. It can happen to yeah. you. Yeah, and by the way, Daryl, that's a great lesson because I think a lot of men think they're invincible and they don't need to go see the doctor. They don't need these checkups, but go get it done. Go get what your doctor prescribes and tells you is important, So, and you're a, you're a testament to it. So we're glad well, that you're doing you. all right, man. No question. Glad thank you're you. doing all right. It's going to be awesome to see you on Saturday. When you were told by the Mets and Steve Cohen they were retiring your number, what was the initial reaction that you had to that news? Well, I was kind of shocked. Steve Cohen is just a remarkable, you know, person. Um, you know, I, 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 like me personally, I believe he, he reminds me so much of George, you know, someone that cares about the history, cares about people. Um, of course, everybody's looking at the circumstances of where they're at now. Um, but I believe that one day they're going to get to where they need to get. It's just a process for them to have to start all over again to go to the drawing board to, to do things. So I was really happy, to, you know, to be able to, come to a place and, and be in a relationship with the new ownership like that, him and his wife, and, and really pull for this organization, pull for them to do well. You know, not just about me. Uh, it's about the history, mm -hmm. the history of players that played there. We played our heart out for that organization. We played to win. We played for our fans. You know, we had some great teams. We had some really crazy teams, which was good, because you got to be crazy to play in New York. You're going to have to learn how – to leave the noise where it is. It's going to be there, but you have to learn how to leave it there. Players have to learn how to do that, and I think that's what it was for me. I, I, I grew up playing here, and I don't care what anybody says. You know, after my rookie season, I grew up playing here, and I went from there, and I never finished under second. I was always first or second in the division. In those seven years that I played here, we were always in it because my desire was to win, and my desire was the fans to push you to make you 
the kind of player you need to be. And the fans made me that kind of player. Yeah, you know, I, I know that you showed up for for Doc, surprised him when his number 16 was retired a few weeks ago. And, you know, we had him on, and he talked a little bit about the regrets with the organization. What was it? What's your relationship with him, or what has it been with the Mets since you left and obviously went to the Yankees? But other than that, what has been the relationship? Well, the relationship was broken um, with the old ownership. And, you know, it's just the way it was. There was no relationship. And, you know, they offered me a two year deal when I was a free agent. And, you know, they told me go out and have a good year and prove it to them. And I did that year of 1990. And, and then they said, well, we'll give you two, two years. And I said, okay, well, it's time to go. You know, that means the relationship is broken um, because you asked me to show you. And I ended up showing you the kind of year that I wanted to have and what I was going to be going forward, but she didn't believe it. So I moved on for that. So that was a really broken relationship. And it was never about the fans. I won't right. hear people say, well, you walked off and you left the fans. No, I, I, I never had a problem with the fans. That was never my case in, in playing there. I grew up under these fans over in Queens. Nobody can tell me what Queens were like because I played there every night, every day. And I expected the fans to make me go out and do my best and be the best player that I could be. So once a relationship is broken, usually with the front office, it's really time to make a new decision for yourself. And that was a very hard decision to make, you know, because New York is my home and it, it always will be. I mean, this is this is where I learned how to play Major League Baseball. And this is where I learned how to be successful. Did you get the impression, because I, I remember my dad saying this at the time too, that he got the impression Frank Cashin could not wait to just break the team apart, and they didn't have an interest in bringing you back, which pissed us all off because we wanted you back. And trust me, most of us never blamed you. We blamed them. Did you get the impression for a while that they just wanted to move on and they weren't serious about bringing you back as a free agent? I did. And I think Frank Cashin was a great general manager and don't take anything away from him. May he rest in peace. But he was a he was a great orchestrator to put the organization together like he did. And he orchestrated that organization to win. And once he started trading off all the pieces, I wasn't, you know, you had guys that were leaving, getting older. Keith and, uh, Keith and uh, uh, Carter mm-hmm. got older. And you had guys, you know, you traded off Lenny, you traded off Mookie, you traded off other guys. And then you brought up all these other kind of different type of players that you wanted to groom them into being players in New York, but they didn't have that kind of fight in them like you know, you got to have some dog in you if you're going to play, play out here because once fans start getting on you, if you can't handle it, you're going to start to melt down. And so I saw that happening a lot. I saw the turnover start to happen that way, and I realized that, man, I think they're going to break this whole thing up. And I was, in, I was really the last piece of that every day because, you know, you traded, you traded Kevin Mitchell, of course, early, but you got McReynolds, and McReynolds was great for us, and he loved – You know, the teammates, he just didn't love the fact of having to play in New York City because he was a great teammate, came back, and Hojo was great, and all these other guys were great. But we were never able to get to that next level of playing after that 88 season. You know, that 90 season, we came close to winning, and the Pirates beat us that year. And and I realized right then and there that that was the end. That was the end of something special. Yeah, I mean, something great playing in Queens and playing in front of – the fans there and wearing the blue and orange was just an incredible time for me because I grew up in this organization. So I, I, I can always say for myself, I love this organization. I've always have. And I just think it was real bitter, uh, bittersweet, you know, now that I have come back and I'll put it that way mm. to the organization and be a part of something very special because this was what my home for a very long time. Was there ever, you know, Doc said this to us a month and a half ago when we had him on, and this, this like killed me as a Med fan when he said, hey, I tried to come back. Like, and I'm not talking about after, you know, he initially left, but like 99, he would call the Mets up. Hey, I want to come back. 2000, hey, I want to come back. And they always said, no, no, no. In your time, obviously with the Yankees, after the Giants and the Dodgers, was there ever a moment in which you thought about coming back? You tried to come back? Was that ever something that was close to happening where you would get that kind of second tenure with the Mets and a chance to have closure with the Mets? No, I I never did. You know, once I put the Yankee Yankee uniform on and got over there and started winning, um, that was pretty special um, because I didn't have any type of relationship with ownership. 
uh, for the match at that particular time. Not like I do today. Yeah, right. You know, the organization, the organization is totally different today. Got a new face, it's a new direction, and like I said before, it's going to take them a little time to get to where they need to get. And I hope they do really get there. You know, I don't take anything personal towards the old ownership. You know, we had we it was what it was, and I kind of moved on from that. And I want to stay in that place because. You know, a lot of times I said a lot of things and because I was hurt and I shouldn't have said a lot of things, negative things, because I'm not a negative person when it really comes down to it. But I just needed to vent a little bit, you know, because of my frustration. I get my, frustration you. Of, my frustration of what happened yeah. in that situation. And when you look back and you say, well, they didn't really offer me, they didn't really want me to be here and they wanted to move on for me. And, and that hurt, you know, that hurt that they wanted to move on. So I kept moving. You know, that hurt when they put me in that position in that, that that last season and tell me to go out there and have a great season, and then we could talk. Yeah. No, I don't blame you for that. We're talking to the great Daryl Strawberry. His number is going to be retired on Saturday. Head on out to the ballpark. It should be a beautiful day. Uh, there was one moment I have to ask you about because it meant it was odd for me as a Met fan, and I'm curious how you felt. And it was that day where the Yankees were playing the Angels at Shea Stadium because the beam fell down at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> and as a Met fan, I wanted to be there. I was like, you know what? This is kind of cool. Yankees, Angels, middle of April. And there's Daryl Strawberry hitting a bomb of a home run and the apple comes up and then it stops and I got it as a med fan it was so bittersweet because I was like this is so cool it feels like <laughs> I'm a kid again Daryl sitting a home run at Shea did anything cross your mind while that was happening or was it hey this is business man I'm hitting a home run I'm helping the Yankees win what went through that it kind of your mind in that odd moment at Shea Stadium I can tell you guys this is memories are, are, are forever and when you play in a place like I did at Shea Stadium and had so much success hitting home runs in that ballpark. Those are the greatest feelings I can ever imagine um, when one think about in his wildest dreams after his career is over and realize how good that really feels because this is the place everything started for me. This is where, you know, my, my life of success has come from in this ballpark. And then to go back into that ballpark and have a different uniform on. Well, of course, I did when I came against them, against the Dodgers and played against them. But to wear a Yankee uniform on at Shea Stadium and hit a bomb to the opposite field, uh, it's pretty special. And then have the apple come up because that apple came up a lot of times. I mean, I, I had a lot of fun having the memory of that apple. Right. And I thought about it. I got. A, I even got a curtain call that day yes. at Shea Stadium uh, and the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome, though. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something that's that's not. It's rare, very rare. Derek, do you know what you're going to say? Have you thought about what the emotion is going to be like? What you're going to say when you're on the field? Yeah, I, I just. I think it's a time to get closure and say thank you to all the people who have played a part: fans, front office people, ownership general manager, coaches, players. You don't make it about yourself because you don't just get there by yourself. You get there because of everything that's around you. And everything that was built around me and my career there, career, was about winning. And they had to put the pieces in places, places for us to be able to do that, and they did. And that's special. You know, that's special to be able to go back to, in this time and reflect on it. And now I'll say thank you to Davey Johnson. Thank you to Bill Robinson. Thank you to Jim Fry. Thank you to Frank Cash. And thank you to Nelson Doubleday, Fred Wilpon. Thank you for drafting me, the scouts, you know, the people, the coaches, um, the people that, I, that were close to my life, friends. You know, Eric Davis would be there, my childhood friend growing up. He'll be sitting on the field with me. Thank you to him and all the hard work we put in in South Central to get there to the major leagues and dream about being successful. So it's a lot of thank you that needs to go into uh, what I have accomplished at this point and having my number retired. And I just don't want to make it about me. Yes, I was there to do it, but I had a lot of help to help me get there. I'm curious, you know, with the Yankees, you were 39, the Dodgers 44, 18, obviously. That's what we think of as Met fans. What was the origin of why you wore number 18? Well, it was high school. I wore number eight in high school. I couldn't show high. When I came up to the Mets, somebody had eight, and I didn't want to take it. But I had to eventually give it up anyway because Carter came over. Right. And he became, <laughs> <laughs> he became the real number eight. So it was, I guess there was a reason. I just went one eight, 
because it had an eight on the back and I stayed with it. And I just wanted to be able to ride that out, you know, to be number 18. And, you know, to be able to stand strong for those years. And, and what I think a lot of times, guys, people don't realize I only played eight seasons there. You know, just think if I could have doubled that eight season, mm-hmm. you know, or playing there. And the kind of numbers I kind of put up in that particular time of playing there had I not uh, left and went in a different direction. So, you know, I'm gra- I'm grateful. I'm grateful for 18. Uh, I'm grateful for the city. I'm grateful for how they embraced me, you know, to be the player that I was able to be in all those years and all the great things that I was able to accomplish uh, with the group of guys that I play with. Well, we are grateful for you. We're yeah. grateful that you're healthy. We're grateful that we could celebrate this on Saturday and obviously all the success you had here in New York. Congratulations. Should be an awesome day. City Field on Saturday, about 3.30 for the ceremonies, 4 o'clock for the first pitch. Thank you for coming on and congratulations, Appreciate Darryl. you, Daryl. Please say hello to Tracy right. for us as well. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys, too. Thank you guys so much.